Welcome to Le Rendez-vous. My name is Garance Doré and I'm a writer with so many stories to tell and ideas to share that I created this special moment to talk about all the things that are going on in our lives. So come, let's spend a moment together. Le Rendez-vous is brought to you by Doré, the skincare line I co-created, wanting to bring more simplicity and efficacy to our lives. Check out the end of the episode for a special code just for you, the Rendezvous listeners. Today, I want to talk to you about a most interesting and important subject, and it's the one of confidence and how to believe in oneself. Honestly, sometimes I feel like you have to be my age to be able to talk about it because it's such a slow learning process. And if some of us are born with natural confidence and were encouraged by their parents and their peers, their teachers from a young age, I think a lot of us spend a lot of time looking for it and trying to find it inside of ourselves. I thought I would share a few things that I've learned as I didn't come into this world with much confidence in myself. And it's absolutely normal. And that's the first thing that I want to talk to you about. The number one thing is that, to me, it's a little bit of a myth when people speak about natural confidence. Of course, when we're children, we all sort of have it, even though a lot of kids are shy and are looking for approval in the eyes of their parents. But my idea and what I've learned is that more than anything, confidence has to be built. It's not something we're born with. It's not something that our parents give us through their undying support and love, even though that helps. But it's something that we have to grow and build slowly in this life. And it starts very early with proving ourselves at school or in sports or in our relationships, our sense of humor. Any sort of skills that we develop are little stones that we're going to add to the mountain of our confidence. And all of them have to be honored and to be taken seriously. Because one can be terrible at school, but have an incredible talent of making others laugh. And one of the mistakes that is often made when we're young is to measure somebody's capacities and in that movement also their confidence through only a few very narrow things. So it could be the results at school, at sports, or just how easy a child can be. And I think that's a mistake. I think everything counts as we're slowly building and helping others build their confidence. So I wouldn't say I started in life with absolutely no confidence. I had been a good student at school. I was always one of the first ones in class. I knew that I was smart enough, and that's already a big thing because a lot of my friends who weren't so good at school thought they were stupid, which is such a pity because, of course, everybody knows that school is just one way to measure intelligence, smarts, all of these things. But I had that. And it had a few other things in my life that had given me a little varnish of confidence. I think that I also found some of my confidence in ego, which is something that shouldn't be discarded completely just because it's ego, even though it can take you on not so interesting paths. For example, for me, I was somebody that read a lot of books and it was something that I was quite proud of, even though I wouldn't say it like that. I drew a sense of self from that. So right away, we can see what's the difference between something that builds real confidence and something that's built through ego. What was more interesting was how the world felt to me. I was very conscious from a very young age that I came from a small society. Around me, the only professional people were people that had restaurants, small shops. I never had met people that worked in worlds that I was fascinated by, like music, like fashion, like literature, all of these things, or TV. All of these felt like such a very distant world to me. 
and it felt like completely unknown territory and something that I had zero belief that I could ever be part of. And it made my world not only very small, but also very mysterious. Because it was so foreign, I had ascribed to the people who were successful or even who were not successful, but that lived in these kind of worlds, some sort of unattainable magic. I thought they must know things that I don't. They must be competent in places that I'll never be. It's a little bit like with doctors, you know, when you haven't studied medicine, how all of these can seem so nebulous and something you'd never be able to understand and something that it takes so much talent and so much dedication and and you kind of build up that admiration and also tell yourself, I'd never be able to do that. And these people are probably incredibly smarter than I am. So I had this thing, I had this kind of enormous distance between me and the world that I was attracted to. And it is through going towards my fear that I slowly started learning that the people that were doing the things that I wanted to do were necessarily the smartest people in the world. To backtrack just a little bit, what I did was building on a small amount of confidence I had built from my talents at school, from my social skills, which I acquired in my 20s, I told you about that in my episode about how not to be shy, I was able to move very slowly towards the world that I was interested in. I remember one of the first things I did was go get an internship at a radio station in Marseille, the city in the south of France that I used to live in at that time. And honestly, those to me were things that were a little bit above the possibilities but still reachable. And each time I was moving forward, the most important thing to me was to understand how people did things and also simply the fact that I could potentially be their equal. There was really this sense of what is my place in the world? How far can I go? How impossible to approach the worlds that I'm interested in really are. How much incredibly smarter than me these people are. How difficult would it be to learn what they know. And so in order to develop my confidence and my belief in myself, there was definitely an up-leveling that happened through meeting and observing other people. One of the most important moments for me was obviously when I started working in fashion. I had zero confidence. I didn't feel like I was specifically stylish or that I had any of the vocabulary that I needed to know, that I had any of the contacts or I didn't come from the right family. I didn't come from the right background. There was nothing there. But one thing that I started seeing was that the people that I admired most weren't necessarily magicians, and most of them were normal people. I know it sounds crazy, but I was young. I still came from nowhere. And when I started realizing, well, they just worked and built experience, and they're smart, but not exceptionally, and I could probably do what they're doing if I gave myself enough time and experience. So what I'm trying to say is that belief in yourself and confidence is not something that will come from out of nowhere. It's not something that you're just born with. Very, very few people are actually born with this natural confidence. You probably know one or two of them max, but most people around you have the same approach, which is prove to yourself one thing grow the confidence, get to the next level, grow more confidence, believe in yourself, all these things that are very good in order to move forward in life if you want to do that. And this also comes with one's relationship to oneself. It's not only about looking and observing people around you. It's also about slowly proving small things to yourself, things that are at your level, and realizing that you can give yourself goals and attain them, 
you can carry a conversation, you can read and enjoy a book that seemed very complicated from the outside. Building confidence and building trust in yourself is also building it through giving oneself challenges. And for this, it's very important to not let yourself or anyone put you in a box. Often in families, we'll have roles. So for example, in my family, I was considered the smart one because I was good at school. My sister was considered the beautiful one. And, you know, today when I think about it, she might actually be much more intelligent than me. I know her brain. I know her intelligence. It's incredible. But because she had put in that box, she spent years believing that she wasn't smart enough. And maybe because of that, she didn't challenge herself to go towards directions that were more intellectual. And I think it's crazy. And it's not that my parents wanted to do that or whatever. It's just like naturally it's easy for people to put you in a box and it's very easy for you to do that to yourself. So I think it's very important to challenge all the visions you have about yourself. And I'm not just talking about brains. It can be about your physical abilities. It can be about the way you see yourself. A lot of people, for example, say, oh, for most of my life, I thought I was ugly until I realized I was beautiful. So challenge yourself and your beliefs about yourself. And practically, the best way to do that is to test oneself on any type of thing. Reading the book, trying to go to the gym every day, whatever is important, developing social skills, all these things are learnable. And once we challenge ourselves to do these, even if it's tiny steps, we learn that we're more than we think we were and we can grow confidence and belief in oneself and believe that the boundaries that we thought we had around ourselves were completely made up and that we can grow outside of that. And so from observing others and from giving ourselves to small challenges, we can already build the foundations of incredible confidence just like that. I often talk about this and that's one of my deepest beliefs in life and it's that not everything comes as a given, right? So confidence doesn't come as a given. Belief in oneself doesn't come as a given. And also, it doesn't all happen just in one's head. I mean by that, that confidence can also be built through our sense of health. Meaning that anybody that's ever gone on a run and came back half an hour later, all sweaty and excited and pumped up, will tell you that these little things are indispensable to our feeling of self-worth and of belief in ourselves. So those are also just very easy tools. And that's to work on our state of mind and on our physical state. Body, mind and soul all work together. If you want to develop your confidence before doing anything else, before looking at others, before giving yourself intellectual challenges or whatever, Work out, go out, move your body and feel the strength that it gives you. I actually believe that muscle strength and brain strength and confidence go together. And that's one of the things that make people addicted to, you know, weightlifting, for example. Anytime I've done that, anytime I've started feeling my muscles, it's like my chemistry in my brain literally changes and I am culprit of not doing it enough, but it's definitely in my plans. So as you're looking to grow your belief in yourself and your confidence, this is the number one way I would go. And it sounds crazy, but it's the absolute truth for anybody that's ever done that. They know it. The fourth way to grow and develop your confidence is to be very careful about how you surround yourself. I have a million of stories to tell about that subject as I've made many mistakes with surrounding myself. And I think that started, unfortunately, in my family. In my family, the sense of support was something that was conditional, meaning that you would only be supported if you did something that fit into what the family system wanted from you. 
right? So anytime you would move out of the narrative, support will completely drop. And that's one of the things that we have to be very wary of when it comes to support. There are two things that you have to be very careful about. And I'm not saying at all that the people that do that are ill-intentioned. It's just that they're not the right people to give you the sense of support that you need in whatever your endeavors are. But before I talk about these people, maybe I should talk about what's a good sense of support. Support is one of the cornerstones of confidence and of believing in oneself. It is very difficult to be the only one that believes in yourself. Not only because sometimes you'll have dips in that confidence and those things will happen even when you're Elon Musk, even if you've proven incredible things to yourself and you're Anna Wintour or Beyonce, you'll have moments when you have dips and you need to talk to Jay-Z and be like, oh, I feel terrible. I don't like my last song. You need support and support from others and other people who love you and can see in you things that you know are here, but you were unable to uncover. And so if you grew up in a family system like mine, where support was not unconditional, and suddenly you meet someone that's going to see you the way you want to see yourself, or even bigger, which is what happened to me a few times in my life, and helped me tremendously, literally changed my life. To this day, sometimes I was talking to my therapist yesterday and she told me things about myself that I could not believe. And we need to hear these things. We need to be reflected in the eyes of others in a loving way. It really helps us grow. And I think that's why it is very important to be looking for support, but also when we can, giving support. So number one, there is something very important to understand even more when we're young and it is that it is very difficult to support the success of someone without feeling very contradictory feelings it's normal it's human nature and don't expect people to be blindly supporting you so somebody that's going to be a good support to you is somebody that in a way is a part of your success whether it's somebody that loves you and wants to build their life with you whether it's your best friend, and I think that usually those are the best types of support we can find, or whether it can be an agent, a business partner, people that actually are there, I mean, if we're talking in terms of career, and are actually vested in your success, your success will mean more of their success. The only problem with that is that sense of support will only last for a certain number of years. Because of human nature, there is always a moment when balances of power change. And I think it's important to realize that and to understand that that positions in life change and that people can't always be your source of support. So it's important to know that support is not always an infinite resource in others. They can be great with us for a year and not for the next 10 years. And that it's okay, and that when we don't feel that a person that was supporting us has the same type of energy to give us, we can absolutely keep them as friends. But the thing is that when the fountain is dry, trying to keep going to that source can be very disappointing and create resentment and anger. When the fountain is dry, for whatever reason, Maybe resentment has grown, maybe a sense of disinterest, maybe it can turn into jealousy. Whatever the reason, trying to go drink at that fountain can become something very poisonous. And I'm going to do an episode about sick fans and the bad people we can surround ourselves with. But when we try to drink at that fountain without realizing that it's now turned toxic or that it always was, which is something that sometimes happens, It can be something that's entirely destructive from the inside, meaning something that you don't see, a force that tells you that they want to take you up and actually pulling you down. You'll know right away in your gut what type of energy a person is giving you. 
but how long will it take you to admit it to yourself? Sometimes when we don't have support and we need it so deeply, because everybody does, we're willing to drink the poisoned water, even though we know it's not good for us, just because we're so thirsty. And there are two types of fake support. And one of them is very benevolent and the other one is more toxic. And both of them leave you very thirsty. The one that I'm confronted with the most is people who just support you as a blanket statement. Often it will be the people who love you no matter what, whether you're up or down. Uh, it can be members of your family that just want you to know that they love you and that it's great. And this kind of support is lovely, but it's very empty because support has to come from a vision. A person that truly supports you, not only supports you naturally because of their love, but also has a vision for you and understands where you come from, understands what you do, and you can bounce ideas and you can grow with them. The best situation being that you're their support and they're your support. So often it can be somebody that's in the same field as you, or if it's in the field of love, for if you're looking for confidence in love, it's good to have a friend that's also looking for love. So people like that have a matching ambition, a matching sense of need can really be fantastic supports. As I said before, just know that it has its own time and that at some point the fountain will run dry and you have to accept it and that's okay. So number one, we had the blanket support, which is great, but doesn't really help. <laughs> and the number two is actual kind of really, truly fake support. And we've all had that. The person that pretends that they support you, but actually, you know that your failures are exciting them as much as or more than your successes do. And this is terribly toxic and it's very difficult. And that's why like, it's so easy to say, oh, just have boundaries and remove these people from your life. It's not that easy, but it's very, very important to do. Because if you stay around people like that, they'll empty you of all of your substance. And I've done that mistake many times. And even I have sometimes felt conflicted feelings towards people that I was supposed to support. But thankfully, with maturity, anytime I feel conflicting feelings towards people where I'm more interested in their failure than their success. I'm just being very honest here. We all have had these kind of feelings. I stay away from them because I know that what I'm feeling towards them is something that's dark and I don't want to go there and I don't want to explore. And I think accepting other people's humanity as well as ourselves is very important because it means that we know not everybody's here for our good and we can stay away from them and it doesn't mean that we take it personally as much as sometimes we can't explain why we have negative feelings about some people. We don't have to always explain why people are more vested in our failures than they are in our success. I think a lot of the mistakes we make with other people is being too idealistic and then being disappointed. But if we take people for what they are with good things and bad things and different positions and situations in life and understanding what it means and how we can protect ourselves, then we're being smart and we can also learn to love them and to be around them without breeding a sense of toxicity because we don't give too much of ourselves, for example. Anyway, I'll come back to that. But it's very important to keep from that section that support is incredibly important. We need it and we need to go out and look for it. Confidence and belief in ourselves is not really something that can be just built on our own personal little island. Maybe some people do, but for me, I know it's incredibly hard. One way to surround yourself with people that are role models is to draw inspiration from people that you don't know. For example, for me, an ideal couple was Paul Newman and Joan Woodward. Um, they're incredible the way they met, the way they were together, all these photos. And these are the things that give me a certain sense of support, a certain sense of direction and confidence. 
I can look at other business people. I can look at a lot of other artists, which is the people that I draw inspiration from or people like David Sedari. His type of career and his type of writing completely make me dream. And that's very important to do that because the last thing you want to do is to compare and despair. So, for example, yesterday we wanted to find people to take photos of for the rave. And so I received a long list of many young, beautiful, elegant, cool women. And I was shocked by how many of them there were. And I put myself in their shoes because when I started in the world of influencing, there were three or four of them and it was very easy. But today, if you try to do that and if you start comparing yourself to people who have the same looks as you, the same type of followers as you, you can completely lose yourself and truly lose your confidence. Sometimes what it will do is reflect a place where you don't want to be anymore and it can kind of anti-inspire you. Whereas if you look up to the people who you truly admire, who've made it, it pulls you forward, it inspires you, it gives you greater confidence in your possibilities. And in a way, it's the same thing as having someone around you that supports you and sees you in your all your magnificence, in the best expression of you. Looking up is a way to keep your confidence with you. Don't look behind you because comparison is a thief of joy and it will bring you down. Go up, get inspired, Look at people that are doing incredible things and tell yourself that as you've been doing since you were a kid, you can grow slowly that confidence that you can be exactly like them. As I said earlier, there are so many things that can chip at our confidence, whether it's a bad comment, whether it's comparing ourselves to people who are in the same pool as we are. And those kind of things are where we need people who support us. They also can be moments when we need to reconnect with the people who have this kind of blind trust in us, uh, the people with the sort of hollow confidence. It can also be moments when we just need to connect with our dog, go take a walk in the park and just not think so much about ourselves. One of the best ways to build confidence is actually to get out of our brain to get out of ourselves and do the stuff. And that will be my last point today. Put your thoughts in action. Don't wait to be perfectly confident to do things. Go out there, ask for things, fail. Failure is not great in the moment for confidence, but failure is the part of a life lived with courage and with a sense of growth. So never wait to be confident enough, to believe in yourself enough to do anything. You have to be able to, I wouldn't say fake it till you make it. What I would say is be vulnerable until you make it. Just go for it, get prepared and go do it. And make this stack of little successes that will bring you to the big success. Whether it's in love, in work, in your art, whatever you do, just like... Take all these little boulders and pebbles and build this magnificent mountain that is your success. Build things step by step. Keep going. I think one of the things of people who succeed is that they just don't let go. They keep at it and build your confidence through your experience. And that's the way to become a true master of self-belief and of confidence. I hope this episode helped you so many things I love to talk about. Please write to me, ask me all of your questions. I just love this subject. I've spent all my life making mistakes, observing and learning, and I'm so happy to share all of this with you and I really hope it helps you. Okay, I'll see you next week. Sending you love. Le rendez-vous is brought to you by Doré. Doré's latest launch, La Micellaire, is a botanical micellar cleansing water that doesn't require rinsing. Minimize bathroom time and maximize outdoor time with our super simple routine. Use code PODCAST10 for 10% of your first order. 
Thank you for listening to Le Rendez-vous. If you want to know more about me, find out about my newsletter and my community. Find me on Instagram at Garance or at my website at garance.world. And well, if you'd like to find out how to spell that crazy name, just check out the show notes. Until next time, sending you love.